let y'all know that even though I still did join the wrong Zoom, this is the fastest I've ever corrected myself. <laughs> Should we get started? Awesome. Um, so sign into the doc if you haven't already. I'll paste it in Zoom chat. Uh, do we have any new faces? Is, is this right being, this is right being recorded, right, Sam? I already got the thing for that, so I assume it is. Yeah, it, it is being recorded. I'm, there's some weird issue with live streaming on YouTube where it says I don't have permissions. I'm going to sort it out later, but it's recording onto Zoom and I'll just upload it to YouTube. Okay. Cool, thanks. Um, any new faces? I think not, right? Um, all right, uh, status updates. Um, we haven't cut a release since July. Um, are there things we wanna push out, I guess, between um, since then, some dependent upon stuff, it seems, and some logging changes. I think they're all like pretty small. There are like five or something pending PRs, which mostly look good to me. Uh, but yeah, we should maybe merge the logging one and create a release and then we can figure out what to do with the others. I think Emma just merged the logging one. Yeah. I did merge the logging one, yeah. Um, bomb one also looks fine to go in this release. It's a very small change, but it's a bug fix. Okay. Um, let's 
Sounds good. Where's my... There we go. All right, I can look at cutting a release with those changes on what's on main later today. Um, do you have permission to cut releases, Sam? Yep. Or Daniel? I guess he's not here. The, I think I, I can't merge the hours, but I can do it. Sounds good. Um, cool. Uh, I should talk about open RFCs. Um, I think the main ones, why share my screen? Um, are uh, the structured bomb format stuff has entered FCP um, from Sam. Um, and I don't, I don't know if there's been a ton of changes from the last two weeks. I think the major one was the S bomb restore logic. Yeah. Uh, which was the, I think, the last item blocking the FCP. Um, the, we, uh, as a part of this RFC, we move the bomb from the label to a file on a separate layer. Uh, to a bunch of files on a separate layer. And then you put the diff ID for that layer in the config for the platform uh, to read and make available to the users. So the back interface shouldn't change, but if you're interacting with the SBOM label directly via the thing metadata label, I don't remember the full name of the label, but if you're using that directly, then that would, probably be a breaking change with this new platform API. Um, and uh, apart from that, everything else should remain the same. This also includes this. There was another RFC I put in, which we haven't yet implemented, which was around uh, like associating the bill of materials lifecycle with the lifecycle of the layer itself. So with these changes, it should do that. So you don't need to regenerate the bill of materials uh, for the layer by storing it elsewhere and then uh, doing some sort of hackery to regenerate it. Uh, I think the only pending comment on this RFC was the SBOM list in the build pack storm. Uh, in the last working group meeting, we talked about changing that from like a human readable string to a list of uh, IANA I media types. The only issue I encountered there is that SPDX does not define media types for non SPDX tags. So I created an issue to uh, have them go ahead and submit a proposal to IANA to. Uh, Fill those up. So the the current media type for SPDX is text slash SPDX, which is for the RDF tag format that they have. Uh, 
they recently added JSON, JSON and XML support, like I think in the last couple of months, so they haven't yet registered those. Uh, I know Cosign still uses text slash SPDX as the media type for uh, JSON, XML, or whatever else, SPDX form format. So I, I don't know what we want to do with that. Uh, because the other uh, the other bomb formats have um, a suffix like a plus JSON or plus XML to denote the uh, file format, and then uh, some the, the the other part is just their media type indicating whether it's Cyclone DX or Swift or SPDX. So I had proposed to them to just add text slash SPDX plus JSON or plus XML, which seems to be the convention for denoting uh, the file formats. But I think uh, Nishan, I don't know the other person from VMware said that they would take a look at. I'm sorry, it's Rose, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, she was talking about it on the OCI call on Wednesday. Um, from what I gathered, and I don't understand this, so please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that the uh, media type is optional anyway, so we can't require it. it. It's optional on the OCI spec. This was like we were okay. using it for indicating the S1 format and the build pack down. Uh -huh. But yeah, if we are fine with just text slash SPDX to indicate the JSON SPDX documents. We can do that. Otherwise, we might have to wait for them to figure out which media type they want to register JSON SPDX documents under. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts. Yeah, I, I mean, it'd be nice to have this figured out. I, I just have no concept how long Sounds like they're going to raise it in the next meeting. Um, yeah. this, uh, That's the next SPDX meeting, which I guess they would decide on the media type name. Then they'll have to submit a proposal to INA, which yeah. they then accept and then update the list. So it's, it's not a quick process. But yeah, I, I imagine we can. Uh, in the RFC, just say we'll use the media types, uh, I guess, depend, like, kind of contingent on this stuff going through. OK. And then uh, we can, um, uh, just, uh, obviously, for the spec and stuff, since we're, we are explicitly listing them, right? Like it's a whitelist or a allow list, rather, versus like a you can use anything in the IANA kind of thing. Like we are explicitly saying only these things. Um, uh, we can try to do that in the spec PR. Okay. I feel like that has to be solidified for the spec PR, right? Yep. You can put in what we think it will be, yeah. right? And then change it if we need to. Yeah, I think I, I I don't know what they'll go with whether they'll go with text slash SPDX or application slash on for SPDX or vendor dot SPDX. I have no idea what they'll register. I guess there's one thing that I want to call out also to make sure that we're all on the same page about for this RFC. So like we're moving from the label bomb to this layer bomb with these formats, right? Um, I think, you know, usually we try to keep platform APIs and build pack APIs able to move separately from each other without affecting people. But once we move to this platform API, I think older build packs that are generating old style bombs, like we're just going to drop that on the floor and not do anything with it. So once you're in the new platform, you're going to need new build packs 
to get a real bomb out of it? Is that also what other people are imagining or are we missing some sort of compatibility situation here? Do we want to continue producing labels just for the- For the old stuff? Old stuff, but never for the new stuff? I guess that's my question. I'm sort of kind of inclined to say no and just try to like prod everyone into moving to the new stuff as quickly as possible. But if that was a blocker, we would need to say that we'll keep producing labels for old build packs and it may be a partial bomb depending on how many of your build packs have upgraded. I, so, Because for a pack user, it wouldn't make any difference. It would, it would have the same interface. It's for other platforms who are trying to read the data, not even write it, read it, that it would be, a, a, whatever consumers they have for the images, they would see a breaking change. I think you might see a breaking change for pack users. Like let's say pack upgrades the platform API and the life cycle in the new platform API. Um, creates this set of bomb files. Like unless we're going to take the old style bomb and put them in these files and add our content to like the types, which I don't think we had talked about doing. Like once pack upgrades, you will lose your bomb until your build packs also upgrade, right? No, we, we did talk about keeping the Tomo files around in the same format. Like the, you would just, take the bomb Tomu file and put it there. You won't merge it. Or like you, you merge across formats, basically. Like Three a layer Tomu, because we had talked about putting it in the layer Tomu file, right? But we sort of merged that. Would we do anything to merge that? Would we copy that over to the config directory? Is that in here and I'm just missing it? I thought that's what I put in there, that like. It would be like the old style Tomo. Okay, yeah. maybe I just forgot that we had that because we've been through so many versions of this and I've lost track. Yeah, same, even I forgot Yeah, that. If it's not there, that was my intention that it would just- Yeah, yeah. Okay, that totally makes sense. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm really fine with all the different permutations of it. I just wanna make sure that everyone, no one's surprised. <laughs> Um, it does mean if uh, that if you are building images from pack in that situation you talked about Emily that like people cannot just continue using existing tooling if they had it right to process the labels if they were doing that. Yes, like you're upgrade. gonna have to when you upgrade the platform API, you're gonna have to move from labels to files. My question was just about like, are we handling our old format in files? And it sounds like the answer is yes. I think the decision of not merging across different formats and just putting everything that we don't know how to merge as individual files should help with that. For the Tomo files, I think we could just merge it the way we do with the metadata normal right now. Yeah. So. We're like, it's already in metadata Tomo, right? I mean, we don't need to do anything different. It's like, we can just keep stuffing everything in metadata Tomo and that's the old stuff. I don't know. <laughs> that also makes sense to me. Like if, if it, like, that's what we currently do, right? Like, we combine everything and stuff it in metadata Tomo, which also mm -hmm. is on players config. Mm -hmm. um, just the, the the restore part would be different because we restore from the label, not from the file. Well, I don't think we would restore for old build packs, right? We're not saying that yeah. like only new build packs get the, the new workflow. Old build packs should just keep doing exactly what they're doing. Nothing should change for them. It's yeah. like you keep putting your bomb in launch and build. There's no layer specific bomb. The question is, do how do we expose that to platforms if we're no longer setting the label? 
Um, does that mean this line here, lifecycle binaries will put the bomb files from layer set to launch is true and launch and build uh, does not apply to legacy? Yeah, oh, nothing should change for legacy. So if there's anything that says like we're giving files to legacy build packs that are new or reading files from legacy build packs that are new, we shouldn't do that because legacy build packs should do exactly what they're doing now. Same input, same output. So it would just be about whether the platform uh, does something different with them afterwards. So we want to keep putting it in the label. That might be the easiest. Just be like, we're going to keep putting it in the label for now. Eventually, this will go away. Yeah. Um, that also makes sense. Doesn't break anyone. We don't have to think about adding any additional logic for the old format. And The other thing we could do is just take what's in the label now and put it in a file, whether it's we're telling people to read metadata Tomal or putting it in a different file. So the build packs behave exactly the same, but you know, platforms get the thing from a file. So they don't have to do a, is there a label? Is there a file dance? I don't know. I mean, you could also just do both and then drop the label eventually if you want. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe that's the easiest for everybody. Oh, a lot those are new. Um, I mean, you could also do the label and then we just drop the legacy format eventually, right? That's also an option. Isn't that what we, what we just said? Is that different from what we just said? <laughs> well, I think you, you said just drop the label, uh, but I meant like just drop, drop the entire legacy format. We are dropping the legacy format for new build packs, right? It's just the old ones. So old build packs, do what they always did. We put it in the label. We always put it in. But one day we're just gonna. So does that mean if we're I just gonna upgrade drop to the label the new and build pack API that I can't can I have to convert to Cyclone yes. DS or SPX? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what happens? I guess in that case as a build pack author if I am still producing the legacy format in that new build pack API? Is it just, it's just dropped on the floor or do I get told somewhere? We can warn and drop it uh, or we can just ignore it entirely. I think warn and dropping is better because at least the user knows something is going wrong. But I don't think we should include that for the new APIs. Like if you choose to upgrade to the new build back API, you should know what you're getting yourself into. I think that's a feature, not a bug. So that someday when we drop the whole format, you know, most people have already migrated instead of it silently working as they updated the latest. Um, do we... We don't have anything in the RFC right now about the warn and stuff, right? No. I think we should follow, like if there is a convention and Natalie could probably answer this question the best in the life cycle right now, because we've made breaking changes of this variety before. Where like a build pack used to be able to set a, a field and now it can't anymore, or the name changed. If like whatever we do right now is just stick with that policy in terms of whether we warn or fail. We never just ignore it though. I think it's either warn or fail. I don't remember which it is. What happened with the types table? That's the most recent change, right? I'd have to check the code. If I remember correctly, based on our discussion, we decided to fail so that, you know, build packs when they do something, if they're running tests or something, their tests fail, like, so that nobody could accidentally trip broken things. They will know. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Uh, I assume we don't want to fail here. We just want to warn, is that true? I mean, I think if they're writing things 
that are no longer respected, which probably fail so yeah. that those build packs know not to do that in their, in the newest version of the build pack. And hope they have tests. Yeah. Like the build pack will not be useful if it fails every time you run it. So people will figure it out and fix it. <laughs> um, does this put a like, uh kind of dependency on i guess the build pack api version to some platform api at some point or just like when we eventually stop doing anything with uh the old format in the platform well someday the life cycle will stop supporting old build pack apis right eventually we need to drop old apis um, and eventually we can make a breaking change in the platform to drop the label entirely if we want. But it sounds like we want some overlap here. But it doesn't create the dependency between them if you squint at it correctly. It's like- Squint at it correctly. It's uh, like it does, it does uh, platform you... API, uh, you know. 012, because we'll never get to one. No longer creates this label, no matter what build packs you have in there. And maybe by then we've already dropped support for that build pack API, so it's not even a big deal. Right. Um, but I assume if you don't, it does mean we just drop every drop all that stuff on the floor, even though the build pack. If you haven't, if you're using like the current build pack point six, I guess is what we're on, right? Yeah, if you stick on point six forever, someday there will be a platform API that's like, that's nice build pack. You ran, nothing's breaking, but I'm going to drop your output on the floor. Um, because that, I guess, the errors check that we're talking about is a lifecycle change from the build pack API version, right? Yeah. But maybe even before that day arrived, we would like the lifecycle to stop supporting some of these older APIs. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> How many APIs have we dropped on the from one? None, but we should start dropping them just so we can set the precedent that we will. going to be interesting because I think until recently, all the docs referenced API over two, so that I know a bunch of random personal scripts yeah. floating around in the internet that use API over two. Yeah, we should like, change that. Like the Python 2.7. <laughs> I think we should deprecate O2 soon. We want a long deprecation window anyways, and we can just start getting people used to that process. Yeah, uh, probably step one is to update the docs. Yeah, update everything. <laughs> they, are, they are now. They are now. Yeah, I, I feel like they aren't anymore because uh, I've had people on my team kind of go through it. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like we had a lot of point two build packs in, in the last year being made from people that were just trying build packs out. Yeah. It's like, that seems old. <laughs> we lost, we've made some breaking changes since, since point two. Uh, cool. Anything else on this RFC? Awesome. Um, the other one, I feel like there's been a good amount of changes on that's maybe worth bringing up are the, I haven't gone through all the stuff in detail that Joe talked about yesterday. I assume Emily is, since you're the one who had that discussion with him. Uh, I have not read the text that was the result of our discussion. Are you, are you going to push is him on changing this to bat? Because he still has not. Well, I keep trying to, but he stopped engaging. <laughs> I think we should, right? Uh, I think if people want to maintain it here, I'm, I'm fine with it. Uh, I only think, I, I personally think it only half fits with our charter. 
of maintaining, like I think it fits with our chart because it's maintaining build packs, but I don't think the actual build packs themselves necessarily fit with our charter uh, would be my only pushback, but it's like, whatever, like I, if we're excited to do it, I'm not, you know, I don't feel that strongly that about it. I feel like there are some situations in which I'm a purist, but when it comes to the teams and the team charters, I feel like they, they are a tool that helps us get the work done and have things be maintained. And what I want to see come out of this is to have this be owned by a group of people. They'll maintain it and shepherd it. And whether or not it perfectly fits the team charter is less important to me than it's owned by the right people. Yeah, I guess like thing when you talk about like a profile bill pack, just like, do, do I have a lot of, like, I guess that's like a bill pack-ish concern, but um, I don't know if we talk about like all those kind of things on here, um, but uh, if we do want to get this changed, we should probably get it changed uh, in the RFC itself. Um, so there's that, um, but I think the, that is not a new, new thing uh, since last time this was talked about. Uh, I think the big one is uh, the relaxing on spec changes, right? Yeah. Uh, API specification or Hello, what's the build pack? Does this mean that each build pack will get an API thing associated with it? Or what was the, I guess, terms of that discussion that you had with them? Yes. That's what it means. So like if you had a dot profile build pack, in the dot profile build pack repo, and then also in the docs repo, there should be description of the API between, of the contract between the app and the build pack. It's like, if you put file here, X, this will blah, blah, blah. So high level of detail, but it doesn't have to go into the spec repo. Um, I guess, where does this API spec go? Just in the build pack? And then I think we should also add it to the docs, right? both places. Um, is there in the spec a list of these utility Build packs that are officially supported because we talked about RFC. The other probably change was like the RFC level thing, right? Of like wanting to RFC a new utility build pack. I think Joe mentioned that yesterday in the working group. Yes. I think there's an idea that we should RFC new utility build packs. I think that gets into defining like in this particular case, whether this falls into, like if you read our RFC repo, we talk about it sort of like material changes needing an RFC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is just basically explicitly calling out that adding a new one of these is a material change that we need an RFC. Um, are we maintaining that list of all the things that are there or is that just on registry? Maintaining a list. Well, like, so in I theory, think it makes sense to have a very... list in the docs, right? And I think the only thing I would want to see in the spec would be sort of like an optional thing for platforms. It'd be like, at least for now, like we can get into it more with system build packs if we want to later, but it'd be like, the platform would like to provide this default feature set, I add all of the build packs, I owe build packs to every order, something, something, something. 
Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so, so the list is just maintain and registry then. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the only reason I'm having trouble answering this is because I feel like somewhere we should put the list in the docs, in our docs, right? And like, if someone wanted to add a list somewhere else, like that's fine, but I don't think there's like a requirement that there's an official list that we're maintaining somewhere. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I think it to some degree means that uh, we could have, um, you can have build pack, utility build packs that do things that like if it is doing stuff that exists in the spec, there technically can be overlap between functionality of how you do that, which is fine. I don't know if I totally follow that overlap. Uh, well, so, for, so for instance, like say like with your remove shell RFC, like that is mm -hmm. a change in the spec, yes. Yeah. Um, like removing that thing yeah. from the spec. But like the bill pack already could already exist for that before that, for instance, is uh, I guess upgraded to by a platform. Um, yeah. So what so, I would like to see is like in the migration docs for that platform API, because it's a platform API change um, to stop running the users dot profile, right? So I think like in the migration guide and the docs, be like we're removing support for user provided dot profile, but if as a platform you'd like to maintain this feature, add this build pack to every. Okay. Does that uh, make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I know Joe mentioned at some point, like trying to auto add stuff to the builder, but that was like in the other RFC or something, right? Yeah. Um, That's how you would do it in a world where that special one didn't exist, right? The system build pack stuff. Yeah, uh, I guess in kind of, I, I think that's where the case is the most interesting. Um, just like, it's the auto adding of stuff. Like, I guess for me, like that list is that, it's just a doc thing. So like, do we auto add the thing? But if you didn't upgrade your platform kind of API, do you have that feature remove? Like, what is that? Do you, you I have feel like that's, pack? that's not a this question right that's the system build pack question like Brian I think there's enough questions in in that RFC that this is a an edge case on the whole concept there that still needs to be agreed upon okay Uh, I think that's it for stuff I wanted to highlight. I don't know if there was other RFCs people wanted to talk about. I think one other thing we've been discussing is the whole shared layers cache situation. Uh, you know, Emily did a brain dump of that and like how we could unify our multiple caching things. Uh, that was this one, right? Additional exportable layers? No, it, it was like oh, we have uh, on pause right now. So like there's the... Um, there's, it's a graph, that's why you can't find it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I see. This one. So there's the shared layers one, there's the asset cache. Um, but 
I think uh, Natalie, do you have that doc which had the Yeah, the doc is sort of like a messy regurgitation of Emily's uh, writable asset cash RFC, draft RFC. Um, you could use one of them to ground the discussion. I don't know. Do you want me to pull up Emily's RFC? Yeah, that has more information, I think, at this point. It's uh, in the middle of the page 171. Uh, is there a particular part in here that I should be sharing? The fun bill pack API chart, flow chart. I liked that flow chart. I feel like we need more flow charts in our RFCs. Hmm. I have a problem with formatting things, so I don't know how people make things look pretty. This looks like a flow chart created by like a third grader. <laughs> in terms of whether or not the boxes are the same size or whatnot. <laughs> I was going to say graduate student, but <laughs> that's fair. Uh, yeah, I didn't know third graders made flow charts. Uh, I just definitely was not doing that in third grade. Um, uh, uh, I think someone, the overarching theme here is someone needs to take a stab at unifying all this all these ideas about caching into a single RFC. It's gonna be really hard to talk about until there is a unified document. I know I've brain dumped a bunch of ideas, which may or may not be good ones. Uh, but I know Sam and Natalie and Dan are all interested in this problem and have their own ideas. And I think we can while I'm gone, that group needs to get together and decide whether any of my ideas are good or whether they have better ones and just throw something into a document, right? Yeah, I'd be curious to understand more the problems that other uh, folks are trying to solve. Like I know our problem domain and the reason that we want this pretty well, like, you know, it's the whole, you know, I build with one image name and then I change the image name and I have to re-download everything again. This is a big problem for a lot of our users, but I don't know necessarily what what other folks are, are hitting and what, how this would solve their issues. Uh, are you saying you want to share uh, some assets um, between multiple images? Basically, yeah. That? Yeah, there's kind of a notion. Most of our users expect that, let's say, uh, the JDK is downloaded. Um, they expect it to only be downloaded once and not once per application image. So I don't know. I could start a document. Um, to just try to capture some of the use cases that that people require in terms of caching, um, maybe that would that would help us to understand what type of solution we need. The two big ones that jump out to me are the one Dan mentioned. It's like sharing certain types of safe caching between builds of different images. So, like an asset with a checksum that a build pack could check might be a thing that you want to cache in one build and be able to use in another. I think a second thing which sort of ties into Sam's shared layers proposal is like right now we cache things in these cached layers and like a build pack um, is responsible for these cached layers. I think we get very paranoid about other build packs making changes to one of these layers for a good reason so that these layers can sort of like end up in the image or like uh, 
affect the rest of the build process because they're part of, you know, it's, it's one of our layers and we do special things with them and like add things to the path and run them and they have these far reaching effects. But I think if you just had a cache volume that was not part of our layers, you know, restoration, export lifecycle, that whole thing, like even if you're just using it for the same image, like the, the set of problems that can happen with it are a lot lower if then to actually use it in a build, the build pack had to go like, you know, opt into doing something with it, like copy something out of it or link to it. If it's not just automatically included in a way such that, you know, one accidental change propagates through every build for all eternity, if it's not recorded in the metadata, like taking cases like that out of our normal layer lifecycle makes them safer because then you'll be using the contents of that cache more deliberately rather than have it injected into your build in a aggressive way. Are you trying to unify both of those things into a single solution? Yes. Part of the reason I'm doing that is because this RFC, which solves just one of those problems, um, which I thought was great and we should just do it. Uh, the big pushback against it is that we have other types of caching and it's confusing. Um, and we have other upcoming caching problems. And if we have too many caching solutions, it will be confusing to people. So sort of the message I took from that discussion in the working group was that there is not a lot of appetite for app layering in more caching unless we unify some of it into a overarching, cohesive, explainable system of caching. Yeah, I, I get that sentiment. Um, uh, I guess just from those two individual use cases, they feel like very different problems to me, even though they sh touch caching in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I think there's a variety of types of caching problems, but I think there's really only two types of caches. They're like uh, cross build cache. So like this is a cache that a platform could choose to share across builds of different images. It is intended for that purpose. And there is a single build cache. And if we set up a system where a platform could provide two volumes to the life cycle, like one for shared caching and one for single build caching, and then we sort of like divvy up namespaces under that. So build packs can have their own area. And like, maybe we add something for assets that's special so that build packs can share, but I don't even know if that's important. I don't know if I care very much about the case where two different build packs care about the same asset. Um, I think we could set up at the platform API level, a cohesive interface that then would allow build packs to solve their build pack problems within their within their caches. The two cases you described are in the way similar to the proposals in this one and the other shared layers one. Yeah. And like, you know, if we rename, you know, if we come up with the right schema for passing things in. Definitely want to make it such that platforms don't need to provide an arbitrary number of volumes based on metadata. Like, let's set this up so the platform can just do the same thing every time. Um, I think the, the, apart from these two, the other main issue I've been facing lately is like just how inline build packs work and they break the entirety of the build pack API or like any equivalent of an inline build pack just breaks everything. Where 
if an inline build pack uses one of the tools exposed through a build layer, it can mod and, and if that build layer is also a launch layer, that inline build pack is modifying all sorts of things that the other build pack doesn't know about. And that's what's the that that's going to be a very high priority issue for me soon. How to fix that or expose that functionality without users just breaking all the other build packs. It's similar to like in some ways, it's not any different than like, I can inject my random build pack into the order and then break everything, right? But maybe it is different because the way platforms, you know, more restrictive platforms might be good at saying these are the allowed build packs in the order, but then if they go and support inline build packs, they've broken their guarantees there. But maybe I think the answer there is just, Maybe we shouldn't support inline build packs all the time, right? It's like if the implementation of that is one of these utility build packs, the platforms can decide whether or not to opt into that. Yeah. I apologize. I have to drop early, guys. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, annoying. Um, I know we had one other thing on the agenda, uh, I guess as an action thing, uh, Daniel, did you want to do start that doc, I guess, of just the different use cases, um, for the caches, for, for the caches as a starting point. Yeah, I think at least the use cases we have in that doc that Emily and Natalie mentioned, so they're think there were three or four use cases I can try to clean that up and present it in the next one. Uh, is there a link to that doc somewhere? I'm trying to find it. Um, okay, so I'm not like looking at something. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, there it is. This, this was just a brain dump from Emily, so it's not cleaned up, uh, but I think it captures all the different themes we have encountered recently in terms of caching. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We have a couple of minutes. I wanted to talk about. Uh, oh wait, we have that on the agenda anyway. Uh, I think did Dan? Did you put the removing their contributors thing on the agenda? I'm not sure who added it. That, that was me. Oh, okay. Um, so this, I think, was put in by Ryan and from Paquetto around removing layer contributors as a concept from LibCNB. There's an attached issue which explains why they have hindered development of certain kinds of build packs through LibCNB. But this is a breaking change. And I think Ryan also wanted to use this as an opportunity to kick off the LibCNB API redesign. Uh, temporarily created a version 2.0 branch, which this targets uh, because I didn't want to merge it into main yet. But I just wanted to ask what others think 
about this and version 2.0 and I guess I also want to know what the Kato thinks uh, because Ryan mentioned somewhere that this along with a bunch of other API changes would be needed for Kato to adopt libcnb apart from the Java build packs. So. Yeah, so that I think the primary motivation for us on the Paketo side on this is that there's two libraries being used right now. There's the libcnb libpack, and then there's packet, which is a totally different rewrite. And um, what we were trying to do is close the gap so that at least packet could be based on libcnb and kind of inherit all of the goodness that comes from libcnb. Um, and so this was kind of the first I guess roadblock to that happening is that they can't they can't get the APIs to work the way that they want with with the layer contributor concept, and so having a a lower level like just layer concept like described here would allow them to do that. Um, it's obviously a change, um, <laughs> a breaking change, but you know I I think that the intent really is just to kind of spur like you know what does V two look like. You know this build pack, um, and and what what is the process for us deciding like now is the time to to work on V two, you know, and and that type of thing. I looked at like the list of core requirements we had for libcnb, and apart from this and the exec D. Interface. I couldn't find anything else that was missing in libcnb apart from like minor API changes that Ryan mentioned about um, the main accepting uh, an interface instead of a function. And uh, apart from that, it looks very similar to packet now. Yeah, yeah, I think we're close. Um, you know, and then there's obviously other things that could potentially fit into a v2 you know that we discussed in in previous meetings and in that doc that that you had pulled together yeah. um i mean is it is it just kind of like is this is this the time to kind of just have everyone on the same page that it's like a good time to start working at v on v2 you know i i mean we've got the branch now we could you know submit um you know pull requests specifically to that and and kind of start development on the on a v2 I mean, I think that sounds good to me. Um, uh, I, I mean, I feel like this is a big enough change in and of itself that the two changes Sam was talking about is without kind of adding even more things into V2 would probably make sense too. Yeah. Like, like version numbers to something we are not super expensive, just kind of upgrading, I guess is. But um, it seems like the other things that would be pulled in are not nearly as large as this one. Yeah. I think all the other changes we had were like mostly new utilities or new interfaces. Yeah, like additive stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I, I think oh, part of I think part of the hope for this as well is by sort of allowing a uh, packet to pull in from libcnb, we would then have a bunch of unified and then we could have a better understood utility on top of that base if we wanted to add that as well. So we were hoping to be able to get this in and be able to make that switch so that we had a better understood push forward on better utility for the whole space as opposed to better just what we're doing. Yeah, no, that's a good point because that's more hands on libcnb than maintaining it and pushing it forward, which is awesome. What do people think about like like the support cycle for for version one? You know, if we're starting on version two, yeah, obviously we would keep working on version one. I guess backporting things that from version two to one that that makes sense that are just additive. Um, but like, at, at what point do we call it on version one and and start moving people to version two? Uh. I, I need to go to a separate meeting, but no. um, should we discuss this on the pull request or the issue? 
Um, I mean, we could table it till next okay. next meeting. You know, it's probably yeah. easier just to discuss in person, and it's not urgent. Yeah, I imagine we're not releasing V two anytime soon. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, sounds good. Cool. The last thing on the agenda, I'll just open up an issue about. So we're all good. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.